of people running their mouths Everywhere like an anchor just bringing them down, down, down We've been looking for a silver line Something to hold on to when hope's been hiding I know a place you can go if you want to find it This is the good news If you're breathing it's for you empty grave, a life that's changed, it all points to Jesus' name. If you've been searching and nothing's been working, I've got good news. Jesus Where your freedom is found Take a minute, breathe it in And watch your life turn upside down This is good news hey. If you're breathing, it's for
the stone the builders rejected is the one with the power to save his spirit came with the purpose living in and through us today let faith rise up within us let his people join in and say Jesus to that name. Lift up your hands, lift up your voice, and shout unto that name right now. Jesus, Jesus, the name that broke the grave, the name that broke the grave. Lord, I give you praise right now. I praise the holy name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It says in Matthew 
chapter 17, while Jesus is talking to his disciples, it says, And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of man, and they shall put him to death. But then that wasn't where he stopped. He said, And three days later he will rise again. Jesus lived that sinless, perfect life. He was betrayed into the hands of man. He died on that cross for you and for me, and he was buried in a borrowed tomb. Borrowed meaning you hang on, you can hang on to it. I'm going to give it back to you when I'm done with it. He was in a borrowed tomb, and in three days he rose again, and he left those garments of death behind. I don't worship, pray to, or praise a dead man. I don't worship, pray to, or praise a dead God. I worship, I pray to, and I praise the living God this morning. He was dead, but now he is alive forevermore. Amen? Amen. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, and if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain, and your faith is also in vain. I believe in a risen Savior. I worship a living God, and my faith and your faith is not in vain because he is risen and he is alive. Amen? Somebody clap your hands unto the living God right now. Amen. On your way back to your seats, why don't you go ahead and shake somebody's hand all across this place. Why don't we go ahead and cross some aisles and, and shake some hands and show somebody every tooth you own legally. Greet somebody you haven't met this morning. Praise God. For all of our online guests and for everybody that is a first-time guest here on this Easter Sunday, this hand clap is just for you. We thank you for joining us this Sunday morning. You could have been anywhere else. There's a church on every corner, it feels like, especially in the South, but you decided to join us, Sanctuary Community Church, on Easter Sunday, and we thank you for it. Uh, if you are uh, new here, there is a QR code in between the seats in front of you. If you would scan that, that would take you to a place where you can give us some information. We would love to be able to connect with you and make you feel like you have found home this morning. Can you believe that tomorrow starts a new month? It feels like it is flying by. Uh, but we have two very important events in April that we are so honored to be hosting here at SCC. Friday night, April 19th at 7 p.m., we will have uh, a statewide revival here with uh, Brother Joel Urshan. And if you've never heard Brother Joel Urshan preach before, you are in for a treat. Invite your friends to come. Invite your neighbors to come, your coworkers. It is a statewide revival held here at SCC. We want to be putting chairs out, extra chairs at the end of our rows because so many people are here. Amen. And then the following Friday, don't forget, this is not just a youth service. We want everybody in this church to come to our Move the Mission kickoff rally. Friday night, April 26th at 7 p.m., it's our Section 2 Move the Mission kickoff rally with Brother Luke St. Clair from uh, Anderson, Indiana. Mark your calendars now to be there. There's going to be, those are going to be two services that you do not want to miss here at the Sanctuary Community Church. Uh, our softball tournament for Move the Mission was going to be this month in April, but it has been moved back to August. So if you are on the softball team or if you are not and you want to be, see Brother Jeff Tillman. Brother Jeff, raise your hand. See Brother Jeff Tillman. If you're inter there he is. If you're interested in joining the team, pl or please see him. Our first quarter baby dedication is going to be on Sunday, May 5th. If you have a baby that needs to be dedicated back to the Lord, which is biblical and important, you uh, need to register through our Church Center app. This is always a very, very special Sunday. Uh, it's always a wonderful time, and uh, we want to join with you in dedicating your children to the Lord. Believe it or not, Mother's Day is just around the corner. And we are so excited to be hosting our first mother-daughter, mother, or they put that on there weird, mother-daughter tea. We are so glad to be hosting our first one of those Saturday, May 11th, 11 a.m. 
to 12.30. We're going to have such a fun day full of food, full of fun, and uh, girls and tea. I'm almost jealous I can't go. We would love, almost. We would love to see all of our mothers and daughters there. If you're a daughter, get your mom to come, and if you're a mother, get your daughter to come. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time. And at this time, we have a uh, special presentation, somebody coming to make a special announcement. I know today is Easter, but it's also a very special day. Today we want to honor Sister Britt for pastor's wife appreciation. If you know me, you know this is 100% out of my comfort zone. So I think me standing up here with this microphone should show you just how much you mean to me. Sister Britt, I asked a few ladies in the church to describe you in one word, and this is what was said. Faithful, dedicated, hardworking. It's hard to put her into one word. You pick. Friend, gracious, loving, generous, dynamic, mama bee. Some others said heart of gold, inspirational, empathetic, indescribable because there is not one word to describe such an amazing first lady, consistent. I agree with every one of those, but for me personally, I can only speak from my heart what you have meant to Tanner and I. We walked into the old building in 2014 for the first time, and you both knew nothing about us. We were two 20-year-olds just trying to find a place that we could call home. Within a few short months, you became a second mom to both of us. We spent countless Sunday nights until after midnight sitting on your couch, drinking coffee and eating your famous coconut cookies while you taught us some of the most valuable life lessons. You taught us to always work hard and to put the kingdom first. There was never a church event that you weren't the first one there and the last to leave. You are the only one besides maybe Sister Paula that can get Tanner to try new foods. You may not remember this, but I still remember the night you taught me how to cook breakfast sausage. You took me to my first ladies conference. You taught me that prayer isn't all about fancy words and phrases. Sometimes it's just sitting in your rocking chair and talking with God. If only your living room chair could tell all the prayers you have prayed for each of us in this room today. You've pulled your car over, stopped what you were doing, and called me while I was in tears in a doctor's office and immediately prayed for me over the phone. You've taught me that no matter what a day holds, it is well. Almost eight years ago, you bought us a baby outfit that said, for this child we have prayed. You never knew what the next eight years would hold, and I still speak that in faith every day. A few weeks ago during ladies' Bible study, you spoke these words to all of us, and I've held on to it every day since. When I'm in the middle of a struggle, instead of questioning God, I need to step back and realize, wow, Lord, you trust me enough to put me in this trial. Most importantly, you have taught me how to pray for others, even when I may be the one in need. I've watched you pray for others in these altars every single Sunday, and there were so many times that your body was in so much pain, and you were the one who could benefit from the miracle. You've prayed with others to receive peace and strength, all the while you needed peace and strength for yourself. You've walked with us through our lowest valleys, and you've rejoiced with us on our highest mountains. I truly don't know how people go through life without a pastor's wife like you. I know this may seem like a really personal story, but it truly isn't. I believe that this story is the echo for every person here at the SCC. Sister Britt, I think I speak for all of us when I say you are the truest example of love, grace, faithfulness, and mercy. I hope you know just how loved and appreciated you are, not just today, but every single day. We love you and honor you. And if you'll come up at this time, we have a small gift from all of us. Thank you so much. Um, I don't have any words today, and y'all know that's unusual. Thank you so much. Very unexpected. I was not, I didn't even know that was a thing this month. <laughs> Good Lord. But um, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. I know that I can't, um, 
I, I really just don't have any words today. I just thank you. Happy Easter. <laughs> If we could all stand and give a round of applause and appreciation for our first lady, the perfect mother-in-law. I agree with every word that was spoken and every word that uh, ladies in our church gave. She didn't even ask me. Oh, you're welcome. Without exiting the spirit of what's going on, if our ushers could uh, make their way toward the front. I, mean, I know we have a lot of guests here this morning, and you're going to wonder what's going on. So I'll just tell you we have uh, something that we speak together every Sunday morning as a, uh, a statement of faith, uh, believing in the blessings of God, and uh, more than just financial, but spiritual and, and uh, health blessings. And we believe when we speak these things, they actually make a difference. And there's so many testimonies of this room of differences made by speaking this. So if we could read this together this morning, if they're going to put it up on the... Yes, let's read it together. Upon the authority and by the orders of your word I have given, and it shall be given to me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithe today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts dismissed, royalties received, my whole family saved and walking with God, in health, abundance, and to walk in divine favor and blessings. I shall be blessed going in, I shall be blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen, and it is so. Let's march this morning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We have several prayer requests this morning, and we know that prayer works in this house. We know that if prayer can fix it, it's fixed. We know that we can bring our supplications to the Lord and that He hears us. He sees exactly where you are. Amen. Our altar team is going to come forward this morning. And if you've got a need in this house, why don't you signify that with the uplifting of your hand? Whether it be financial, whether it be health, whether it be spiritual, you've got a need in this place. Amen. This altar team is here for you this morning. If you've got a need, these are faith-filled people that are here to pray for you. Amen. So if you want to come forward and, and ask for prayer, they are here to pray for you. But right now, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer together. Let's all bow our heads as we begin to pray. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, that we can bring our needs to you and that you hear us. God, we believe in your power. We believe in your healing power. We believe that you are a deliverer. We believe that you are a provider, oh God. And we bring our needs to you right now, laying them down at your feet, knowing that you hear us, knowing that you see us, and knowing that you're able, oh God. We thank you for what you're going to do in this place today. We thank you for what you're going to do in every single one of these needs, oh God. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus I'm forgiven. 
There on the cross at Calvary, you gave it all to purchase me. You are the Savior and the God who set me free. And now my heart cries, this is my Redeemer. With my whole life, I will give you praise and talk. For your mercy never fails me In all my days I have been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Sing this with us I love your voice, for you have led me through the fire, in darkest nights, you 
this house right now could we let our praise be heard could we let our voice be heard all over this sanctuary he's worthy to be praised he's worthy to be lifted up that's it use the hands that God has blessed you with use the voice that he has given you to adore him magnify him We've got good news today. He no longer is dead, but he is alive and alive forevermore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I feel hand clapping in my hands today. I feel shouting in my feet today. 
He's no longer in a grave. He's no longer in a tomb. But I declare the tomb is empty. It's empty. Somebody shout, it's empty. Oh, if his tomb is empty, you can come out of yours today. You can walk out victorious today. Whatever has had you possibly plagued, maybe has possibly had you perplexed, you've come into a place today that is declaring the good news of a risen Savior. He is alive. He has arisen. He's no longer in the grave clothes. But he is high and lifted up. I said, he is high and lifted up. Hallelujah. I believe he's soon to come get his church, his bride that is making themselves ready. And today we're doing that in this house. And wow, what a spirit of expectation that I feel all across this room. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here today. Why don't you do this for me? Would you give the team of praise singers and musicians a hand of appreciation? The countless hours of work and preparation for this special day. Thank you, Sister Lindsay and your team and to all of our, all of our teams and to all of our volunteers. You met them from the parking lot all the way through the front door. And if you were here for Sunday school, you've seen uh, this this great church in action, and I say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you for honoring the first lady of this house. Thank you for honoring my wife, and this truly would not be the same church without her fingerprint and influence upon it. You wouldn't want to come here if she wasn't here. I can promise you that. Hallelujah. She is the, she's the glue that holds us all together. Also, all of you ladies, all of you ladies, it, it snuck up on us, and it, we failed to get it in the announcement. This month has just flew by. But I do have a quick announcement. Uh, if you are a lady and you are interested in a Bible study, a ladies' Bible study, this Tuesday, my wife will kick off the next round of a brand-new Bible study. She is kicking off, and there are two opportunities for you to join one is at 10 a.m. and one is at 6 p.m. You can register through the Church Center app. The Church Center app. If you've never downloaded that, you can do it today. Search Sanctuary Community Church, and you will go under sign-ups. And there is a short little link. You can sign up. You can get your name on the list. There is some curriculum, but you can get it very quickly. Even if you don't have it for this week, come anyway. Come anyway. I can tell you over the last, uh, well, since the beginning of the year, the ladies that have come to this Bible study, I, I continuously get reports of what a treat and what a blessing it is to sit amongst a group of ladies and be fed the Word of God and rightly divide the Word of truth. And I am telling you, if you are a lady today and you are interested in, in growing in your relationship with God, please, this Tuesday, 10 a.m., or 6 p.m., you can find a place to connect here at the sanctuary. Aren't you thankful for a great church? Aren't you thankful for a great church? It's already been said, but I want to echo, it's so good to have all of our guests. You are here today, and we're so honored. I'm especially glad to have all of my children in the house of the Lord today, and I'm so glad uh, to have the patriarch and the matriarch, my mom and dad, in the house today. We're honored that they are here. <laughs> Hallelujah. And if you have family sitting beside you, some of you have rows full of family, and it looks so good in the house. It, it looks so good. Thank you for coming with your family today. If you have your Bibles, turn with me. I do know and I recognize that there are a lot of festivities and activities that will follow uh, what I will deliver unto you, and I will respect your time. I will not belabor the point. I will do my best to, to preach very expediently and get you out of here before 2 o'clock so you can go to lunch. Just kidding. Uh, 
But no, I'll do my best to be very conscious of the time. How many of our children and adults were here yesterday for our uh, Easter egg hunt? Did any of our children? I know there was probably about 100 people. They're probably in Rise Up. There is a group of children 4 to 11 that are having their service in the back. Uh, but I want to say a special thank you to Sister Paula Cordova and her team of uh, volunteers that executed. And wow, what an experience that we had yesterday with our children for our Easter egg hunt. Thank you so much for that. Verse number 50 of Luke chapter 23. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor. He was a good man. And a just. The same had not consented to the counsel and the deed of them. In other words, he did not agree with what had just taken place with Jesus Christ and the crucifixion. He did not agree. I, I think it's important that Dr. Luke made this, made this very plain. That the man who is questioning and is about to make a bold request had nothing to do with just what had just transpired. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. I believe it was John said he begged for the body of Jesus, or he craved the body of Jesus. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Luke said the same thing, begged the body of Jesus. And he took it down. Imagine this with me. The now deceased body, Joseph. Doesn't say a crew of, you know, soldiers, men. He took it down. Wrapped it in linen. Laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone wherein never man before was laid. And that day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew on and the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was lain in other, in other words there were several very important and particular women that followed if you could look at it this way the funeral procession to commit this body back to the back to the tomb or back to the place where it would lay. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath according to the commandment. Now upon the first day, flip the page. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And it came to pass, or they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. Verse number 8, and they remembered his words. And they returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And verse number 11, and their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Wow, what a backdrop to what had just transpired. With the help of the Lord, I want to preach to you today on the good news. 
the good news. Would you lift your voices and lift your hands toward the heavens right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for what I feel and what I know you're going to do and what you're going to say. God, I pray your anointing would rest upon me and anoint, God, what you have given me for this hour, for it's truly good news that you want to share with this church today. It's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Everybody say amen. You may be seated if you won't sit down on what God is about to do. I want to give honor today to Brother Jeff Tillman did a phenomenal job in our Sunday school lesson. If you were not here and you missed that, it's somewhat of a backdrop unintentionally to where I will go and some of the things that you heard him say I will expound upon this morning. And uh, I believe when we leave, we'll have a full picture or a completed picture of what the Holy Ghost would have us to hear today in this service. If you were here Wednesday night, I, I minister to us on the foundation of our faith. The foundation of our faith can be, we can look at and point back to a healed, a hill called Calvary. It was where an innocent man died for you and I. The Bible would describe him as the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. He was the mediator for us to bring us back into relationship with him, a, a relationship that was broken all the way back in the Garden of Eden where sin first entered into mankind. And from that point in Genesis unto where we are, where we observed on Friday, that Good Friday, something so terrible in a disastrous moment where you would look on the surface and you would think, how could they kill such an innocent man? Matter of fact, it's something to be said when the person that is making the decision looks at you and looks at your, your court case and, and he would say, Pilate would say, I find no fault in him. In other words, you're not guilty or you're innocent. But the crowd convinced him. And matter of fact, he released them unto the crowd or to the mob of people to fulfill Scripture where he would be crucified. Many look at the Gospels and they look at the miracles of what Jesus did in those short few years of him coming to the forefront and displaying the miraculous power of God that would work through him. But miracles are not why he came. To heal the sick is not why he came. To raise the dead is not why he came. Is not why he came. To heal the leper is not why he came. To heal the blind is not why he came. All of the notable miracles that Jesus did was not his intention or reason for coming. The reason that God stepped down and robed himself in flesh was to become the sacrifice for all of our sins. That which we could not do in the Old Covenant or in the Old Testament. Yes, they slew animals and beasts and birds. And they would simply just roll those sins forward with an anticipation that one day a Messiah would come and he would be the redemption for all of mankind. They didn't in full know what he would be. If they had, they would not have crucified him. If they would have recognized who he was. But the Bible says he came unto his own and his own received him not. But it still did not abort the process because there were a few or there were many who did not recognize who he was. 
He was a man on a mission. He was a man that was possessed with purpose. And he understood that if I am going to fulfill the will of my father, I must do what I have been called to do. And there was the moment in time. It wasn't his first time where his will was challenged. It wasn't the first time where his desires were challenged. Actually, it was in a a, a deep, dark place uh, of a wilderness of 40 days and 40 nights uh, with no bread and no water where he literally learned how to crucify himself. See, he crucified himself before he ever got to Calvary. He crucified his will and his desires uh, in 40 days in a wilderness being led by the Holy Ghost. Uh, but when he came out, he understood, uh, I am filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. I know it's Easter Sunday. But what he understood was uh, I've already endured one temptation. Matter of fact, I've endured three temptations from hell. Uh, and all I had to do was quote uh, my own words. And it was at those words that he would quote uh, that he would set in motion and establish uh, his authority uh, in the earthly realm as God manifest in the flesh. Uh, so he then began to perform miracles. He then began to zigzag through uh, those shores of Galilee and all of that country and hillside. Uh, and he would begin to do miracles uh, so that people would begin to recognize uh, there's something different about him. He's not just the average person. I, I, I know John was the voice and John was the forerunner, uh, but John wasn't the Messiah. John wasn't the, the one that God had robed in flesh uh, to come and pay the sacrifice, but Jesus was his name. And Jesus would walk among men and he would do great and mighty miracles, but it only lasted a few short years. And here we find ourselves, his popularity and fame had grew to a place where he was drawing the attention more than the elected officials. He, he, was, he was drawing more attention than Caesar. And he was drawing more attention than those in power. And, and, and when he claimed to be the son of God, that was the, that was the red flag. How can you claim to be such? And then... They begin to form and plot the process of crucifixion. He would be crucified. It was a brutal death that he would go through. It was by those stripes that we do have access to our healing. It was by those stripes and it was by that spear that thrust into his side where blood and water came forth being a symbol and a, and a, and a symbol to us today that out of us we can be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost because he said except a man be born again of water and spirit. You can't have that without the blood of Jesus being applied to your life. And out of his side was a symbolization of what would come not many days hence. They wrapped him. They placed him in a tomb. This tomb was not just any old ordinary tomb. It was, a, it was an empty tomb. And I began to ponder, I began to ponder this thought this weekend and prepare and Brother Jeff, you, you, you were all around what I was going to, how I was going to bring this message home today. You know, emptiness is not something that you think would attract somebody. How many like an empty gas tank? How many like an empty bank account? Empty 401k? I, I'm not going to lie. I kind of like an empty nest. I found out just how much I do love my wife when the nest got empty and then one of them come back home, but she's supposed to leave again. We don't like empty seats around the, the dinner table. Emptiness has always been something we never, we never really like because if something is empty, something's missing. If something's empty, something's empty. And something's missing. 
But here's what the Holy Ghost told me to tell this church today on this resurrection. I've got good news for you. I've got good news for you. That God is attracted to your emptiness. That God has never been scared of your emptiness. Yes, that tomb was empty when he got there. But it was just a small dwelling place for three days and three nights for him to accomplish what he was created, what he was born to do. And that was to purchase our salvation with his own blood. So I submit to this church today that the divine attraction, and the good news of this is the divine attraction of God is your emptiness. Look at the lady at the well. She came to the well with an empty water pot and said, what, 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 what are you doing? Well, I've come to get water. I've got a water pot. And God, manifest in the flesh, would look at her and say, if you drink of this water, you're going to thirst again. You can come and bring this water pot, and you can bring it week after week, day after day, but you're going to go home, and you're going to drink the water, and you're going to thirst again. But Jesus gave her a revelation today. I'm not scared of your emptiness. I'm not scared of what you came to this well with today. I know you brought a water pot, but you're going to forget about it in a few minutes. I know you thought that you were going to get natural water, but in just a few moments you're going to come into a revelation of who I am. How many husbands do you have? We don't even want to talk about that. Well, I, well, I know you got five in the one you're living with. But just who are you? Who are you? Well, I'm just the guy from Galilee that's attracted to emptiness. I'm just the guy that's got good news for people like you that is broken, as destitute, as weary. You've tried everything else and you went home and you ended up empty again. But if you drink the water that I give, the Bible says that you will never thirst again. So what are you telling me, Pastor, on this Easter Sunday? I'm telling you that lady went for an encounter at a well, and when she left, she became the well. She became a well of living what it began to flow out of her it began to do some matter of fact she went back to her family her friends and she brought them up come see a man come see a man come see a man that told me all I ever did come see a man well you just told me that you got five no 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 it went deeper than that she understood God was attracted to her emptiness why is it we want to hide our emptiness? Why is it we want to hide behind the mask or the veil of our emptiness? And we go through life being unfulfilled. And we go through life with bitterness and anger and resentment. Unforgiveness. And we walk. We're a shell of a person that we should be. We're empty. But I've got good news. He's alive. He went into an empty tomb. It was a borrowed tomb. Why would you borrow it? Or why would you buy what you're going to only borrow? Why would you buy something you're only going to need for three days? But he borrowed the emptiness. And it was out of emptiness that would come the resurrection. It was out of emptiness that he would raise himself up from the grave, victorious over death, hell, and the grave. So what I'm telling this great church today, it does not matter how empty you feel. You may feel all alone. You may feel full of everything but God, but you're still empty. I had this little illustration that I wanted to share with you today. Can I have, Anna, you want to help me? Come on, I'm not going to embarrass you. Who else wants to help me today? I need I need somebody else. Anybody want? Y'all quit shaking your head now. You want to help me? 
I promise you I won't help you. I won't, I won't help you. I'm going to help you, but I'm not going to embarrass you. Now, if you were choosing one of these, which one would you choose? You would choose that? Are you sure? Okay. You can have that. Now, why would you choose that? You know what she did? She did what most everybody in this room would do. Because we're attracted to full. We're attracted to something in something. We're attracted. Man, that's a lot of candy in there. We're, man, Reese's Pieces, Milky Way, Snickers, Whoppers. Uh, what do we call this kind of food? Junk food? Candy? I'm sorry, all you got is the empty. Now, most everybody in this room is going to rejoice. She's going home with something in her jar. That's what it looks like. It's full. Isn't it full? But if it's full of all of this stuff, it's full of candy. Okay, I'm going to use you as a bit Full of pride, full of unforgiveness, full of bitterness, full of anger, full of mistrust, full of... And the list could go on and on and on. But I'm going to pretend to be the Lord today. I'm far from him, but I'm going to pretend to be him. But I want to bless you. I want to bless you. But you're full of yourself. You're full of everything else. Oh, come! I want to feel you, but you're so full of everything. I want to pour something in you, but God's not attracted to the full. God gets attracted to something that's empty. And this little lady come and all she has is just a little empty vessel. And God said, I've been waiting on Easter Sunday morning to find somebody that would just get honest with themselves and realize all I am, God, is empty. I don't have anything to give. I don't have anything to offer. But all I have is myself. And here's what God sent me to tell you. If you're empty, God can just start depositing. God can start putting it. You wish you'd have got this one. <laughs> trying to get it in there. I'm trying to get it in. And here's what I'm telling you as short as I've ever I can't get it all in there. You know what we start doing? Oh, I'm living, I'm living in the overflow. You'll never get in the overflow until you get empty. You'll never start shouting because of an overflow of bless until you get empty. Then you start. I want the blessings of God. I want the provisions of God. I want the miracles of God. I want everything that God has, but I'm so full of myself. If he tried to put it in me, I couldn't hold it. I couldn't hold it. And as a result, he's sitting on this side. I want to bless Anna. I want to bless her, but she's got so much in her. But you want me to tell you how to get in the over? You want me to tell you how to start doing it? God, I'm sorry for my sins. God, I'm sorry for my trigger. God, I want this. I want this bitterness out. I want this anger out. I want this mistrust. I'm letting go of this church hurt. I'm letting go of all the things that have been said about me. I'm letting go of everything that I've let build a wall up between me and you, God. I'm starting to understand. I can't do this without you. I begin to empty myself. And before long, I don't even recognize who I am. I don't have a crutch. 
I don't have a crutch to lean to. Boy, I have made a mess. But see, some of us get happy right here. I'll just hang on to just enough. I'll just hang on to just enough of the world. And I'll try to, come on, God. Get a little bit in me. Come on. I'll just hang on to just a little bit. I, no, I can't feel anything. Is full of themselves. I can't be their Lord and Master and Savior as long as anything's left in them from their old life. I've got to have them just like that empty tomb that he went into. It was empty when he went in. But what happens when he gets into that empty tomb? It's just a resting place. It's just a place where he purchases you and I and goes to battle on our benefit. Matter of fact, he goes to hell and he gets the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And he comes out victorious. I don't understand the whole transaction there. I just know what the word says. But all I know is that when I get rid of all of this stuff inside of me, God, oh, went through a bitter divorce. I'm still going to hang on to that. No, I can't do that. It's Easter. I got to get rid of it. I was lied on. I was rejected. I was beaten. I was bruised. He didn't take any of that with him into the grave. He didn't take any of that with him into the place that he would lay a place called empty. But it was from a place called empty. It was in a borrowed tomb that he would do with no other animal, with no other priest. He became our high priest. He walked into the holy of holies once and for all and became the sacrifice for you and I. The veil, the Bible says, when he took his last breath and gave up the ghost, it was torn from the top to the bottom. It can no longer be assembled in the same form and measure. He became our high priest. He was the lamb, but yet became our high priest. He was the son of God and the son of man. He was God manifest in the flesh. He never ceased to be God, but he gave us the image so we could relate. God became like us so that it could be penned and written. He is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. Oh, he knew what we would go through. He knew the brokenness and the relationship fractures. He knew all that we would face. But our challenge on this Easter Sunday morning is do we leave this house empty? Or do we leave this house full? I can leave full of myself or I can make an altar here at the front and it would be much like this candy on the front. I'm just confessing my sins unto the Lord. Lord, I'm sorry for all my sins. Lord, please forgive me for what I said last week. Please forgive me for what I did. Please forgive me of the life that I've lived. Please, God, forgive me. You know what the Bible says? He's just to forgive. He's just to forgive. When that last sin, oh, I can't let that go. Oh, you just don't know the church hurt I've been through. You just don't know. Some of you are right here where I'm at. There's one thing that's beset. There's one thing that you have held. And as long as that one thing is staying inside of you, there's no way. He can fill you to the capacity that he wants to fill you. But get this revelation. The last thing, that last weight, that last thing that you begin to put into the master's hand when it's out. You now hold a container. You now hold as a vessel that God becomes attracted to. 
Why, why is God not attracted to our pride and our jealousy and our unforgiveness and our backbiting and our murmuring and our complaining? Why is he so, he's not attracted to that? That's kind of, oh, that's ugly. That's not the nature of Christ. His nature is love. His nature is mercy. His nature is grace. It's easy to point out other people's faults and failures. It's easy to put put condemnation on people. But that's not the nature of the Savior that got out of an empty tomb. It's his nature to feel. I know what you did. I know how you did it. But I choose to love you in it. I know you failed me. I know you walked out on me. I know you've made vows and you hadn't kept them, but you finally got empty of yourself, and now I can feel you. I I know you started to do good, and you made a mistake, and you backslid on, but you've emptied yourself, and God said, I'm going to fill you with purpose and destiny, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn everything the enemy meant for harm into good. Oh my goodness, because you got empty, you think you're full, but you're still not full. It's more that goes in there. It's more that goes in there. It's more he has for you. I don't think it can get any better than this. I feel like I've, I've arrived and went to heaven. Where's this church been my whole life? you just getting started. Because when you think you're full... You just get it all over again. And he begins to pour it back into you. And he begins to pour it back into you. And what happens is in you, you begin to share what God has done for you to somebody else. You begin to be a salt and a light to somebody else. But until you get empty of yourself, the good news is God can feel empty. But he cannot feel what's already full. I wish I could tell you, you could take that home with you. But you've been such a great example, and I'm going to take this because i got to give this money back to who I borrowed it from. <laughs> what did you walk in this house full of? What did you walk into this house in need of? Did you walk in here? I know my illustration was quite extravagant, but I hope you got the picture. Whatever you came in here with full of, you can leave empty of, and then you can have the testimony, he filled me with his spirit. I rise on this Sunday, this Easter, to boldly declare unto you, he's not scared of your emptiness. Are you willing to get vulnerable and say, God, I bear my soul to you. I let go of the things that have held me back as musicians come. I let go of what has held me captive. Isn't it strange and isn't it funny? We can be so full of ourselves and then say out of our own mouths, I feel so empty. I feel so lonely. I feel so afraid. I feel so fear. And I'm empty. But yet I'm full of myself. On this Easter, your emptiness is what attracts our Savior to you. Well, when I, when I get a good job and when I get a good family, when I marry the right person and I have the right amount of kids and I have the right pedigree, I, we're trying to get full of ourselves before we submit ourselves to God. And God said, you got it all backwards. If you'll come to me as you are empty, then I can fill you with my purpose, with my destiny, with my plan. Empty may cause you to fear, and empty may cause you to anticipate all at the same time. And I pray that is what's happening. I fear, but I'm... I'm so expectant in what God has for me in this next season. I am too. God did not send you to this house today just to hear a message for you to go home and talk about a pastor throwing candy on the ground and putting money in jar. No, 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 no. He borrowed an empty tomb 
And what God does is he borrows your emptiness only to deposit himself inside of you by the Holy Ghost so that you then can do what his disciples did, turn their world upside down. It was before his ascension, he said, I'm leaving you, but I shall be in you. I'm with you today, but you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days since. You're going to receive power to become witnesses of me. I am the remedy for your emptiness. They had grown so accustomed of him walking with them. They had grown accustomed to seeing him every day, but now he's about to disappear. He's about to disappear, and the only promise he gave them, go to the upper room. Go to the upper room and stay there until I fill you with my spirit. Go in emptiness. Go in brokenness. Go even in sadness, but go to Jerusalem. Go get in that upper room because I promise you I'm going to meet you there. I will meet you at your emptiness. Today I submit to you as you stand all over this house. I submit to you in this house that some of you walked in here so frustrated. You're bewildered. You don't know. You don't know how you're even going to face tomorrow. But I've got good news. God's attracted to empty. God's attracted to your emptiness. And if you would just take the first step of faith, and that's stepping out from where you're seated and walking to an old-fashioned altar right where I'm at. Is there anybody that would just step out of a seat today? I'm going to use this candy as an illustration. Whatever that is. I don't know what that is in your life. I don't know what that's it. I don't know what that represents in your life. That's it. Somebody pick up something. That's it. Just start passing those out. I know it's just candy. But it's a representation of something that you're about to empty. You're holding in your hand something. You're holding something you're going to let at the feet of Jesus right now. You're holding something that has filled you. It's, it's, it's consumed you. Consumed your thoughts, it's consumed your mind, it's consumed your every day. You wake up with it on your mind, you go to bed with it on your mind. Some of you are so afraid of failure. You wake up so fearful and afraid. If I try, I'm going to fail. If I step out in faith, I'm going to fail. What? Oh. But if you could only understand right now, you hold in your hand a representation of that which God is asking you to release. It's the last, if I could say the last straw, it's the last piece of the puzzle. Where he will step into your emptiness and begin to fill you. There's purpose, there's destiny, there's souls. There are things that you have not even dreamed nor thought of that he's getting ready to speak through, through your emptiness. Would you lift your hands all over this house, Father? You're attracted to my emptiness. I want to lead this congregation through repentance. Maybe you're in your seat right now. I want you just to begin to pray in your own way. You're not going to repeat my words. We're not, we're, but you're going to start praying prayers that are between you and God. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I put into your hands 
the broken pieces of my life. I put in your hands those things that I've held on to. I've tried to manage my life. I've tried to take control of my life. I've tried my best to make things work on my own. But God, I realize that I was designed to be filled by you. I was designed to be filled by your presence and your spirit. And today on this Easter Sunday, uh, I repent of my sins. God, I ask you to forgive me. Uh, go to those secret places of my life and that, that which I hold up to you today. In just a few moments, you that are holding a piece of candy, you're just going to lay it on an altar. You're just going to lay it on these altars. And when you do, you're letting it go. You're letting that hurt. You're letting that rejection. You're letting all of the things that have so easily beset you. There's a call of God on your life. There's a ministry yet to be established in your life. There are things that you will do for the kingdom to advance it. But God's attracted to your brokenness. God's brought you to a place of emptiness so that he can fill you. Lift your voice and lift your hands. Father, I repent. I repent of my sins. Now, God, take the empty. Take the empty, oh God. Take the empty. Oh, now, God, if you'll take the empty and fill me, I'll do like the lady with the, uh, with, with the water pot. I'll go tell somebody the good news of what you can do in somebody's life. I'll use my voice to declare the good news. As you lift your voice to the heavens, this team is going to sing. Let your voice be heard right now. Let your voice echo through this sanctuary. Let his spirit speak through you. God's next. God's next for you is predicated upon your emptiness. God's next is directly correlated with how empty you are. <laughs> 